I'm very pleased that um, after spending some time on shelves that we will now finally uh, test whether uh, experimental vaccines and therapies are actually working and protecting. Because this should be the last epidemic of Ebola where all we have is isolation, quarantine and not stockpiles of a vaccine and of uh, therapies in the region. And so that's the good news uh, that now vaccines will be tested that uh, uh, in Oxford and elsewhere in the US uh, that experimental vaccines will be tested but let's see uh, let's make clear what it is it's a so-called phase one trial which means that we are looking at small numbers of people healthy uh, people uh, to see whether there aren't any uh, serious side effects and what kind of dose to give when we go for the efficacy trials themselves there's some good um, there's some good reasons to believe that these vaccines will work because they work in uh, you know, in primates, in non-human primates. Uh, but the only way to find out is to test them out in people. And that has to be done in epidemics. And will the vaccine um, come on time to stop this epidemic? We don't know. It will take a few months before we have the results of phase one. And then uh, we can start probably early next year with efficacy trials. But it's unlikely that this epidemic will be over um, within the next six months. So we need, we need to do everything we can to stop it by um, using experimental therapies, and that's also going to start, and by testing these vaccines. I think this is Ebola's perfect storm, in the sense that um, it has hit countries that didn't know that it exists, that the virus exists, but that are coming from decades of civil war where there is no trust in government uh, where health services are in an absolutely abysmal state. So people have no trust in them and they can't expect anything. And the traditional beliefs about causation of disease, there was even questioning whether this virus exists, um, a slow response. So all that together it means that we have now an epidemic out of control. And Ebola is controllable when it is in the initial phase around one hospital, a small town. But when an, an entire country is affected, you can't put an entire country in quarantine. You can't isolate everybody. So uh, the longer it takes, the more people are infected and dying, the more complicated it is to control it. And that's the phase we're in now. This devastating Ebola epidemic in West Africa is a reminder that um, emerging infections at epidemics will always occur. And that we're really not ready for it. I mean, if this would have been a, an airborne virus like SARS, I mean, we would have had a, a total disaster in the meantime. Um, so we need to make sure that we are far better prepared um, in each country and as an international community. If we don't have more doctors and nurses on the ground in Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea, this epidemic is going to grow and grow and grow. And it's not only in the interest of the people in these countries, but in the rest of the world, that that doesn't happen. And so I feel that the whole world has to contribute. The NHS is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, institution that employs doctors and nurses. Uh, when you go into medicine, you know that you will face this kind of dangerous situations. So and 100 doctors and nurses out of, I don't know how many people are employed in the NHS, maybe a million, that's not going to make a difference for uh, in Britain, but it will make a difference on the ground. Because the UK is building a hospital is providing aid, but we need also people.